Hi, I'm Benson Sue, and this is a story about how I competed with Koguchi to win the very first Falcon Drift show off in 2003. You're listening to the Still 80 Mania podcast. I'm your host, Benson Sue, and this is Storytime. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is your guest host on this episode of Storytime. My special guest today is your lovely host, usually, Mr. Benson Sue. Hey, honey buns. Hello. You're not here. I'm here and you're in the hot seat. Everything is upside down right now. No, it's good. (laughs) This is good. I'm, I'm like... I'm at home right now. so I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good times. It's good times because I have you here and I've always wanted you to be on the podcast. And I am you know, on the podcast. No, time. but like in the hot seat. Okay. And I love it. And I'm, I really want you to like feel how your guests feel, you know? Yeah. So guess what? Today you're my guest. Okay. And today's story time... I want you to talk to me about it because we have a special, special, I would say, anniversary coming up. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not our anniversary, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a special 20th anniversary coming yeah. up. So let's start off by that and just talk about what we're honoring today on this episode. Okay. Well, uh, it is the it's 20th anniversary of the very first Falcon Drift show off in 2003. Oh, man. You guys hear that? 2003. So it's going to be the 20th anniversary on March 2nd, I believe. Oh, my gosh. March 2nd, 2023 is going to be 20 years. Which is when this is airing. Yeah. Excited. So happy anniversary. And you won that event. Yeah. So you are the first place winner in the first Falcon Tire Drift Show Off. Yeah. Which was nice because I think the... The previous event, the previous big event was the option Ika 10. Oh, yeah. And I did you really choked. bad. You choked. Re- I choked. Well, according really to your bad. mom, it was terrible. It was terrible, yeah. <laughs> you traumatized her for life, and <laughs> she never went to another nope. one of your drift she events. Missed, so. She missed the one that I won. Yeah, redemption. So I want that to be the center of today's talk is everything drift show off because I feel like that was the one that started it all. Ika 10 was cool. It was like a preview, but I feel like drift show off really kicked off the um, higher level drifting competitions here in the States. I mean, it was, it was cool because I think option Ika 10, uh, not that many people knew what was happening yet. Yep. They, they hadn't, you know, that was the first time we saw like the Japanese well, our generation, right? The first time we saw Japanese drivers driving on U.S. soil and seeing like real drifting in person. Yep. And then uh, Falcon Drift Show Off kind of started, uh, you know, riding that wave. Yeah. So that's kind of like you know the buzz had already started happening, and and then people started showing up. It was up. sparked. That, like, that one was that was a big event. The love for drifting was sparked, and I want to first talk about the organizers of of drift show off and mm-hmm. we got to and a lot of them have been on the show kind of you know yeah, so let's bit. let's talk about that real quick roll yeah. call yeah so, so i'm uh i forgot we might have to get some firsthand to you know make the story really accurate so because i don't know all that went be- behind the scenes yeah but it it happened between um falcon mm-hmm. um nick fusekis yep and Ken Miyoshi, who ran Import Show Off, who was, you know, a staple in um, in import car culture in Southern California for yeah. a really long time. He Mainstream was, Productions. Yeah, he was really famous for his Import Show Off car shows that he was doing. And um, it was kind of like a, a match made in heaven when he started working with Nick at Falcon. And yeah. they brought over Koguchi and... Sego Yamamoto. And we'll, we'll get over the roll call because yeah. I got a roll call sheet right here. Okay. So we're going to talk about That's those good, guys. That's good because I didn't really do any research for this story. It's okay because you're my guest. It's yeah. fine. Like, I'm, I got this. I yeah. got you. Um, and then who else? One of our, another one of our guests helped out. Um, it was Moto. Yes. Yeah. 
And we, we kind of talked about that briefly. Yeah, Moto on did Moto's. Moto with uh, Drift Day. He he ran track support for that mm-hmm. day. Made Club sure everything yeah. made sure everything ran smoothly. Had the course workers out and and did all the logistics of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that was the dream team that birthed Drift Show Off. Yeah. <laughs> the fathers of Drift Show Off. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about the day because I mean you were there. And I want you to kind of set the scene, okay. right? As a driver and, you know, the event. Like, like, tell me, what, how did the day feel for you when you showed up? What was the vibe? Right. So um, we had never experienced an event like that before. So I think the option ICA 10 was very different because uh, not that many people knew about it, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if, you are, if you are already into drifting and um, you you were participating in events, you kind of heard about it, but um, on this scale, like for public consumption, uh, this was the first of its kind. So it was a really big production. There are like so many cars that were there because they had the car show going on. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a lot of spectators, which was different from Option Ica 10. Yep. Um, and, you know, like we knew Koguchi was going to be there and Sego Yamamoto and we were going to see Signal out there again. Mm -hmm. Um, So showing up was, you know, it was, I think I still, I had a lot of butterflies in my stomach still just because, I mean, I had that at option Ika 10 and I choked. Yeah. So like coming back out again, um, still having that nervousness, wanting to do better, obviously, because I oh, believed yeah. more in myself. You're not even like used to competing because we just didn't. No, we didn't compete yeah. much, right? We so this was kind of the drifting. start of com- competition. <laughs> and um, I don't know, like uh, as someone who drifted early on mm-hmm. um, and my like my competitive nature, I, I really wanted to like prove myself and yep. um, is, you know, it was embarrassing, like not doing well in that in that option Ica 10 and you know I just wanted to like do better yeah yeah well you did so let's talk about the Japanese drivers because yeah I was really excited too and it was kind of cool because you guys were going to be taught by them because there was a drift clinic right and they would give you some it, feedback so I, I remember having um like a driver's meeting mm-hmm. um at the beginning of the event and it, they were kind of just like laying out what what they wanted to see from us and they're showing us the course yep. and you know like we sucked back then so <laughs> showing us the course we were like uh you know okay you know you're like, like oh it, yeah at dude. least in my mind i was just like I'll, I'll do my best we'll we'll see what happens right yeah um and we didn't have a lot of experience uh with well, we had no experience doing like a like a chicane, so they had a chicane out there. <laughs> so trying to manji for What's the first time was really hard. <laughs> um, you know, but um, I forgot what your question was. <laughs> it's okay. I, I got you. I got you. Well, let's talk about the Japanese drivers yeah. and and so. I want to go do a little roll call here. Uh-huh. Um, so we had Koguchi yeah. and his red one eighty. Yeah. Uh, we had Drifter X Komatsu. Um, and Chunky Bai mm-hmm. in the orange S15, and Sego Yamamoto mm-hmm. and his green Mazora Chaser. Yeah. And, you know, I found their driving experience at that event, like mm-hmm. how many years they had been driving. Yeah. And it's kind of a trip. Sego, Sego wasn't driving that dude, long. Dude, Sego and Chunky Bai both were only driving for four years. Yeah. And then Komatsu was five years. Yeah. And you Koguchi know, was like 10. 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's like the super OG. Yeah, he was. But yeah. I mean, like, in essence, it's not, they hadn't really been driving that long. Like, Koguchi, yes. But mm-hmm. the rest, it was kind of like they were so much more like better than we were and it, we we seem leagues apart yeah but it was only a few years you know yeah but but when you're in japan and you're just surrounded by experience and talent mm-hmm. and um purpose-built drift tracks yeah yeah purpose drift built drift tracks people who could you know show you the ropes four years is much different yeah for that kind of environment mm-hmm. than you know our environment where like we were still learning. It was like the very first days of drifting for us, you know. Yeah. So 
Drift show off was like at the House of Drift. That's what that's what the, it's been coined. But yeah. like we were legit it wasn't in the House parking lot. It, it wasn't. And yeah. we were in the parking lot. Like, yeah. yo, Irwindell Speedway wouldn't even let us in the gate. Yeah. They were like, you stay outside mm-hmm. and drift around the light poles. Mm-hmm. And so it was like we had like the worst of the worst part to go in. And yeah. you guys got to drift over the gutters. Yeah. Like too bad. Yeah. So I feel like. So then I want to talk about our buddies, like our friends that were there driving with you. Mm-hmm. So so name some names, like oh, you know, what you remember. Um, I have a list too, but yeah. you know, we'll do a roll call. Uh, let's see. So I'll start Calvin Wan was there. Yep, in his red FD. Yep. Uh, Hubert Young was there in an S14. Mm-hmm. Um, Casper Canule was there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Kyle Mohan was there. Yeah, and it's RX-7. The, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, like I said, I didn't do any research, so just trying to remember off the top of Brian my head. Norris Brian Norris and the Norris. black JICS-13. Uh-huh. Alex Pfeiffer was there. And a silver 86. Um, How could you forget Reese? That's right. Tell, Reese Millen okay, was there. Tell us about his car that day. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I guess Reese, Reese heard about this event, and at the time he was doing a lot of off-road rally <laughs> and he was sponsored by Mitsubishi, I believe. So he brought out his full race prep uh, Lancer Evo, all wheel drive, all wheel drive. <laughs> you know, and it looked like a like it looked like an off road rally car. It had yeah. the mud flaps. It had like anti lag mm-hmm. and um, and it was crazy. Like he it was uh, he was there competing with us. Yeah. Uh, so I I think from what I remember when I I talked to him, he was just. You know, like that's that was his idea of drifting. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's what drifting yeah. is, right? Yeah. Like, I think it started that way o- over drifting on tracks, and um, he just wanted to check it out, and so he brought his race prep car, and he was competing with us, and he quickly realized like the difference in skill level. <laughs> uh, as you know, he was a professional race car driver yeah. already, and he was killing the track. Like he was out there doing all wheel drifts everywhere mm-hmm. and had no problem with the course just like first couple laps in like he he had it nailed and he was um it on one hand we were all impressed i think even the japanese drivers were impressed yep and then on the other hand we were like well, what the hell why are you here <laughs> you know well, at this okay. amateur event how's you here's my heavy hitting question mm-hmm. like legit did you think it looked good it was impressive, but it wasn't the drifting. Why was it impressive? It takes it had smoke. It, it takes skill to do what he was <laughs> yeah. doing, right? Um, I mean, I think, I think in a lot of ways, it takes more skill to drift that course in that car than it did in our cars. You're so nice, honey. Jeez, you got nice things to say. <laughs> I'm just being honest, actually. Yeah, I mean, because like, I from my vantage point, I was in the crowd, so yeah. people were talking. Were they really? Yeah, because were, were you ugly. around a bunch of fans? Yeah, fans? I, I mean, I could see that because if, as a drift fan, that's not what you came to see. No. Right. You no. wanted you wanted to see the Japanese style drifting rear wheel yeah. drive. Yeah. Um, but I up to that point, I had never seen all wheel drive like an off-road rally car do that either yeah me either me either it was just it was ugly but (laughs) but i mean like but it's true what you're saying so you're you're such a see that's what i love you honey like you're so sweet and you see like the good i mean when (laughs) when you watch when you watch ken block rest in peace ken block and he's in his Jim Connor videos it looks cool so it it was the same kind of thing for me but At the same time, I was just like, you're in the wrong place, buddy. Yeah, for sure. Go we, do that we, somewhere else. We didn't make it anyways. Fine. <laughs> Let's continue with our roll call. Okay. Well, um, we can talk about that later. Cause yeah. Yeah. He did make it. Yeah. But something happened. Richard Tang and the JDM Rice JDM won. Rice won. Okay. Yeah, as a red S13 hatch. I'm glad hatch. you did this. Yes. And um, King came. The champion and he competed of the '97 uh, Ica 10, mm-hmm. the That's right. OG he, he Ica 10, competed, yeah. and he had an S13, a burgundy one, mm-hmm. looked pretty stock. But yeah, it was. I'm sure Andy Yen was there, right? I I don't know, but okay. those were like my my that was my short list. Okay, but anyway, sorry if you didn't make it. To what my about short Mark? List. Was Mark there? <laughs> Mark. Mark Mondo. I can't remember. I don't know. Were you there, Mark? 
I was there, but I was in the beginner section, so I didn't compete. I was just, okay. it was a separate event. I forgot about Yeah, yeah. there was a clinic. That. Yeah, they the same, have the You guys drove clinic. the same course and everything? No, we're at a, we're off the in the corner. Pad. Oh, somewhere else. Skid yeah, it was a really stuff. small, tiny J-turn, but okay. I learned a lot that day. Yeah, it's good times. So, um, we, I, do you have any funny memories from that day? Funny memories? Um, I remember... Koguchi, like, killing the demos. Yes. Koguchi, so after they would do their demos, Koguchi would pull back into the car show area. So they would pull the, you know, those metal fences, uh, the separators, but yeah. usually for, like, crowd control. Mm -hmm. They would move the fences out, and then he would come out onto the course and do his demos. Yeah. Well, he would do that, and then the crowd was loving it because mm -hmm. he was he was just you could tell yeah he was hugging all the all the walls and mm -hmm. there was like um on the main corner there was like a 90 degree where the wall is mm -hmm. it, the, the corner was like a hairpin but there's a 90 degree wall protecting the fans and he would hug the wall like going into the corner and then somehow do the 90 degree and then hug the other wall so like <laughs> you know none of us had seen that before and none of us had really seen people drift near walls like that yeah and um it's like an exhibition like we yeah he we was totally never seen those. he was totally flexing on all of us yeah um but uh probably we, with a cigarette in his mouth while yeah. he was doing that <laughs> he was and and i do remember he would he would like make eye contact with the camera as he's drifting by and just <laughs> doing all like all the tricks all the right? things and and then he would go back in the pits and people were loving what was going on and he he was so it not the pits in the car show area mm -hmm. he'd go in the car show area and he was feeling it so much he started doing burnouts <laughs> surrounded by by the you know people the fans that were there to watch oh, and man. like doing all this like and he i think he was like even doing rolling burnouts oh and God. i was like that is so dangerous Dude, um but you know sick, this is what right? like early days of all of <laughs> yeah. this stuff and so uh you know i you know that definitely wouldn't fly today no someone would get shut kicked your out event down, get shut down. <laughs> um but yeah, I, I do remember him just like having a blast showing mm -hmm. off in front of everybody. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to put it in context, before an event like this, the only kind of crazy driving you would see is like people doing burnouts, leaving a, yeah. a car show or like something. Like if you're a, you had a Mustang. So something. seeing like this <laughs> level of car control in, in like the Japanese, like the import car scene. Yeah was so mind-blowing mm -hmm. and and for it to be at the level that koguchi brought was like yeah it was it changed so many lives that day yeah i hear it all the time including yours people that were driving people that were just there spectating yeah like i hear it i hear it all it's a defining event yeah. for sure um i want you to take us behind the curtain okay okay so you know as a driver for that event how you know, what was your experience and is there some kind of fun little tidbit that you could tell us that we didn't know about that event? Are you like... Yeah, I'm, I, I asked the heavy hitting questions Are, are here. you like, are you thinking of something specific you want me to say? No, I'm just trying to... A little tidbit? Yeah. Give me something. Um. Okay. Oh. You, oh, you want some tea? Oh. I have some yeah. tea. Okay. Spill it. Spill the tea. So previous to that event, I... Um, I did some work for JIC and it was a deal. John Kim. It was a deal that went bad. And uh, it just, I, I ended up doing some work and I didn't get paid for it. Oh, so you did their website. Did, did you do their website? I, I did, but we won't go into specifics. We just, should. Just know that it was a <laughs> deal that it didn't, it didn't work out. Right. And so I was mad. They were mad. And then that, so if you're on, so one of the pages on my old website that still gets a lot of views today <laughs> is my drift team name generator. Uh -huh. And that's why sometimes if you're clicking the button, like JIC sucks will show up in the name because <laughs> I was bitter. Okay. And so, uh, so he, you know, they showed up to the event. Uh, Brian Norris was driving there. They had like a works S13. Mm -hmm. It was a black S13 yep. in JIC colors. And um, so 
competing next to him. Like I was like, I, I really just wanted to beat him also. <laughs> 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 and we didn't get too far in the story, but um, like, I guess you'll, you can hear how that turned out later. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for the tea. I will, <laughs> I will take that. I will take that. So, you know, this event, it's, there's a car show, there's a drift clinic, and there's a competition. Mm -hmm. So, you're, you know, this is redemption day for you. Um, walk me through the format of the competition that day. That is kind of hazy for me. I know mm -hmm. that we had some practice, and in between practice, we could watch uh, the demos. So mm -hmm. we can kind of see what they wanted us to do. Yeah. Which was kind of... That was hard. How could you even learn when we, those guys like, are like so at, much yeah, better? With our at our level, we we're just like you know what we were asking questions like what line do you want us to take this and that and <laughs> like it did, really didn't matter because no one's line was consistent <laughs> and just like watching what they were able to do was just so hard. But um, yeah, I remember we had practice and then we had our qualifying runs. Yep, and it. It kind of felt like they were just winging it because mm -hmm. they didn't really give us a format ahead of time. Yeah. It was kind of like go out and compete. And so yeah. we were just laying down our best laps. Uh -huh. And then... Um, so there was no like, this is your one competition lap. It was kind of like... I th think they said we had two. Uh -huh. um, and then... But we didn't know what was going to happen after that. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of, at least me, I, I thought you know, we, we qualify and they pick the best and then, and then you yeah. win. Like that's it. The, be the best one wins. <laughs> or, you know, I thought it was something like that. Cause yeah. How wrong were you? <laughs> I was, I was wrong. Cause after, you know, things progressed, like they're like, okay, now it's time for this. And we we're like, oh, okay. okay. And we just, just went with it. So, so you qual so obviously you qualified. Yeah. So I think what happened was I had a, I had, some major suspension issues in my car. And I can't remember if it was pre-qualifying or after qualifying. It was I, after. Was it after? I have I actually have um, a little Are you asking me all these questions that, and I don't even remember and you have notes No, on I it? do. I told you I got you okay. this whole episode. So it happened after qualifying. This was at the semi, after the semi-final run. Okay. So we'll get to that. Okay, so do you want me to keep going then? <laughs> yeah, you can keep going. So, it's fine. So that day... I was doing pretty well and um you know I didn't have a lot of experience competing in drifting mm -hmm. but um I was very consistent from what ah, I can remember. Okay. And um you know it was so unlike what I was going through at Option Eka 10. You mean and spinning it, out in front it's of your just mother. Const just constantly yeah. spinning out um letting the nerves take over. Yeah. Um, this was the time where like I experienced being in the zone mm. and it seemed like nothing was getting in my way yeah. and I could just lay down like solid lap after mm -hmm. solid lap. And, uh, and you know, this is not to say that I was awesome, yeah. but th you know, this was probably the best I could drive at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I was able to do it consistently. With what you had. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so there was a rain gutter, um, right at the, it was going through the entire track like mm -hmm. around the, the apex apex of the main yep. corner. And so I would go over it and, you know, after a while, you know, stepping on the brake or during transitions, I felt something didn't feel right in the car. Mm. So I guess I qualified mm -hmm. or, you know, I didn't realize it was qualifying. I thought it was just competition, right? And then <laughs> I think afterwards they let us know who made it. And then they said, okay, now you gotta, you know, get ready, we're gonna go again, right? Mm -hmm. I forgot how long the break was, but they, we were given a break. And so I was like, there, you know, I pulled in. Um, and at the time, I was sponsored by Cartoon. Mm -hmm. And they're this local shop in um, City of Industry. Yeah, La Puente. La, was it La Puente? Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. Same, um, same. Yeah. And it was, uh, they were like a, they were like an importer, mm -hmm. of like an engine importer. Yep. And they got you your front clip. That's so right. So that's when you were able to do your when SR. I did my swap. Um, and for me, they were kind of we're like, we were just friends. And they, they came out, like they, they were there to, you know, just provide support. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had my, I had their cartoon sticker on my windshield. Yeah. And, and Comic Sans font. And Comic Sans. That was, that's right. That was their logo. Was... And, and they said they, they would just like be around to help me. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So. Um, it's so fancy. You get a pit crew. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, and so, you know, I pulled in, I'm like, dude, there's something wrong. And, you know, when I step on the brakes, I, f I feel the whole front end, like Wobble. geometry changes. Yep, yep. And then, so we, we jacked up the car and we saw that um, the, the bolt holding on my sway front sway bar bracket was gone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think someone went in the pits and they found it. <laughs> and uh, it was, so I think that bolt is actually welded onto the frame rail if I recall. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we we're like, how do we fix this? It, it's stripped or whatever, you know? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to compete yeah. after that. Um, but the, the guys, they, they ran down to the shop from Irwindale Speedway, which was maybe, I don't know, like a 15 minute drive yeah. um, to find something. They came back they drilled a hole in the in the frame rail and they they fixed it. the whole time i was just like you know my day my day's over right yeah um they were able to fix it um what? right as they were calling like last call so right? so i'm gonna correct you okay so they didn't fix it actually until they had help from somebody so it was really cool like long live motor trend they had a really good article from the event oh, really they did and it's still online today and yeah, my memory's bad yeah and, I, and it just says written by staff but i'm okay. sure maybe maybe ed Lowe had something to do with it okay. who knows but i'm gonna i'm gonna quote I think it was scott sunishi oh maybe but um i'm gonna quote he them. wrote it for i think he wrote it for import tuner and then they published it online then, for motor trend well maybe. because that's what happened to a lot of the old publications oh they, Shout out Scott Sunishi. Yeah. Hey, hey. I'll read it. Okay. Because it's Tell kind me of, what happened. <laughs> I'm a, let me it's read. a good story. Tell me it's what a, happened. It's really good. <laughs> I was excited when I read this. And it's, let's see. <clears throat> In a semblance of controlled chaos, the cartoon staff raced back to the Hacienda Heights shop. Now it's Hacienda Heights. <laughs> I know. <laughs> In search of a replacement bolt. Returning an hour later only to find that they picked the bolt that was five millimeters too short. Okay. Wow, time the drama. Was, I know. Time was ticking away. Yeah, and while this was happening, people, they already started the second round. Yeah. And so I was I was asking the, the staff, I was like, you know, what happens? Can, you know, what, if it's my turn and, and I'm, my car's not ready and they're like, just get, just make sure you can get in before the last car. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay, Sue was facing elimination because his class was ready to run as the cartoon guys feverishly rushed to finish repairs. Luckily, Ken Gushi, the 16-year-old drift wonder, blew his 240SX's tranny. Oh, Ken. Whoops, he missed the roll call and was willing to donate parts. Oh, Ken, thank you. <laughs> to Sue <laughs> and his the lady to finish the competition. With the car finally repaired, Sue rushed out onto the track. As, I think I was as the last car. Yeah, I was the last car to compete. Yeah. So that's like the jog of the memory. But yeah. thank you, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Scott Sunishi or whoever yeah. from Prime Media did this. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was freaking out, and uh, like I said, I was in the zone that day, and no matter how much freaking out I was doing, how much you know, how many thoughts were that were going through my head that I wasn't going to make it out. Yeah. Um, maybe that helped me in the end because I wasn't thinking about even, you know, what I was going to do at the track. I was more worried about like if the car would even get done. And so when I went out there to do my, my laps, yeah. I had a clear head. Nice. Because I had, you know, I hadn't worried about a single thing about the actual driving. It's probably a clear head and no alignment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's imagine? true yeah i didn't even think about that <laughs> oh my god yeah i love that yeah so um let's see so we did that we did that semi-final round mm -hmm. which no one told us it was semi-final <laughs> right we're like i was just thought okay if i do good then someone's gonna win yeah right this is it right and then we finished that and they're like okay they called they called three drivers out of the semi-finalists mm -hmm to do the final round oh my gosh and guess what 
you're not driving solo like you were before. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> they wanted us to drive with Koguchi. So it was going oh to be God. like uh, the traditional Tsuiso type rounds in, you know, Japanese competitions yep. where one one lap you lead mm -hmm. and you're being chased. Yep. And then you switch positions and then that guy leads and you follow which we have never practiced i don't think Dude, we, we didn't did know it, anything right? about tandem yeah we stay we, away from each other tandem was not even it allowed even, because of insurance and stuff i think it wasn't even and on plus the table. we were not even good enough yeah, right exactly so yeah so now <laughs> i had to drive against my hero and idol koguchi they didn't even put sego in like no it was <laughs> like, just they so, made it more so fair, what happened like... was uh sego <laughs> and i believe the the signal twins. drift twins mm -hmm. they were judges oh. so koguchi was just out there to you know mess with us you know <laughs> um but you know just like just like he was showboating and and showing off earlier yeah man he was so good compared to us. He was doing that still during that final round. <sighs> so, you know, like, uh, so the finalists were uh, Alex Pfeiffer and Brian Norris and myself. Mm -hmm. What happened to Reese? Oh, we didn't talk about Reese. Reese yeah. was in there too. Okay. Uh, Reese, Wait, fourth? Uh, no, I think. So what happened was Reese was announced. Mm -hmm. But when he found out he was driving alongside someone else he's just like no way man like oh, this is my liability. this is my race car i have so much money in this race car oh i'm not drifting it next to someone else because oh. the the risk is too high wow and i guess he didn't know who koguchi was right Damn. um come drive a drift competition you don't know who koguchi is and so he, he was like i'm out <laughs> and i don't know i can't remember if they picked the, like four mm -hmm. and he was out so there's just three or if they pick three and since uh reese was out they let someone take his spot yeah i don't remember that detail but um someone will correct you in the comments yeah i hope someone remembers yeah motor but, trend didn't talk about that <laughs> yeah uh and so the, so we were out there driving with koguchi and that should have been something that totally messed me up. Yeah. It should have given me crazy nerves and Runs. just, yeah, <laughs> like diarrhea and barfing <laughs> and just uh, spinning out all over the place. Yep. Uh, but I was in that zone that day mm -hmm. and like nothing could mess me up. Um, I, not to say that I wasn't nervous. I was so nervous. Yeah. And, you know, I think... I think Alex Pfeiffer went against him first. Mm -hmm. And so I just sat, like, I just sat there in my car. Yeah. I watched them take off together and I was listening to it and I was just like, uh, butterflies. My heart was racing. N no, I'm not going to lie. I, I sat there in my seat and I, and I prayed. <laughs> I was like, I prayed the most desperate prayer of my life at that point. And I was just like, don't like, don't let me mess up. Please uh, just, you know, like help me get through it. <laughs> just like the amount of nerves I was dealing with was yeah. so overwhelming. Yeah. Was, but there's in car footage of, of your prank. Of, yeah. Like oh. I just, I like I put my head down, I think uh, against the steering wheel. And I was just like, <laughs> it was very, you know, I don't know, just. Yeah, because we never been through competition like that ever. Yeah. Even even Ikuten, it was it was like quick and it was done, right? Like yeah. I feel like this was a little bit more drawn out. It was out. just you know, and you're going. They, they weren't blind. telling us what was going yeah. on. It's just like okay, now you get to drive against Koguchi, yeah. right? Um, and so I followed him, and you know it was all a blur to me. Yeah. But I remember just laying down the same lap that I always did. Mm -hmm. Actually, I uh. On the chase, no, on the lead lap, yep. uh, I ran over a cone through the chicane because oh. I, I could hear him. I can yeah. hear him behind me. Yeah. And uh, I... Didn't Mark, you pull away from him? So that's what I that's what I heard when they announced that I won. Yeah. Uh, someone talked to me afterwards. Uh -huh. Or I think it was Moto. Mm -hmm. Moto was there and he was, he was translating. Yeah. And 
and he told me the judges picked me because I was the only driver to pull away from Koguchi. Yeah. Sick. This is not Love to say it. Koguchi was trying to get on my door because he wasn't. The dude was showboating while we were out competing for our <laughs> lives. We were trying to go as fast as we could. Koguchi was hugging walls. I love like, that you don't give yourself crowd. credit. I just but, love but it. Watch Come the on, video. Babe. Watch the video. You can see he did not take the right line. And he was not <laughs> trying to. He was just out having a good time. Oh, hey, a win is a win. 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 There is no like convenience or yeah. pity. Yeah. Like you won. Well, I, I mean, I just want to clarify, <laughs> you know? It's, yeah. So like I this uh this kid that was drifting for three years did not take out the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. But I mean for the day you did. Yeah. Yeah. That was dope. Yeah, so so I let's let's see. So I, I had that screw little screw up for that lead run. The chase run was so crazy because his car took off like a rocket. <laughs> and uh and he could like um he connected this this cor this corner way in the back with the main corner like he didn't stop <laughs> drifting he just connected the whole thing and i was like i don't know like that's like magic stuff like yeah. i didn't know how he was able to do that that was like had, no man's land he like, had we so don't much do control and he was so fast and it was so cool to watch and there was just no way of of like putting down a good run behind that guy. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like when you're like watching someone way better than you and yeah. you're trying to learn from them, you know, it's it, not learning. It's it's halfway like me driving. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was also having like this weird experience just like watching him in awe yeah. while I was driving. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we'd never seen like anything like that before. Up and, close either. And even in 2003, we all knew who Koguchi was and we mm -hmm. had seen all of his videos and he was already like the 180 king yeah. back then. So to see him in person and be on the track next to him was just, uh, it was amazing. Yeah. And he had such a cool guy persona. He always oh, had a... Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> He had it down. He did. He, you know, getting out of the car and like leaning against his car and uh -huh. to smoke a cigarette, the cigarette in, the in front of, of the mouth. fans. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> okay, Playboy. He already knew. He, like, I don't know where he learned all that stuff, but yeah. he, he already knew how to put on a show. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, so what did you win? Tell me. Do you remember? I won a lot. So. I know. That was like the first time there was like. Yeah, I got Some this good big, prizes. I got this big. Well, first of all, I had this humongous trophy. Oh, God. Here we go, guys. So I think. Here we go. <laughs> because, you know, Ken did trophies for his import show off stuff. Yes. Ken always had really big trophies. Yeah. So, well, it depends on what it was. Yeah. But I think I got maybe like one of the biggest trophies he would give out to anybody. Yeah. And I don't know what the car show equivalent is to earn a trophy like that. Mm -hmm. But it was way taller than me. And I remember I had to take it apart to take it home. Oh my god! It yes. would, you know, I had yeah, a hatchback yeah, yeah. with which you, know, you could fit almost anything in. I feel a lot of stuff in there, but sitting in the front seat, like not a you drift know, show all off the way, trophy. You know, having it laying down all the way in the trunk, it still wouldn't fit. Yeah. Um. So I had to take that apart. But so I got this really big fancy trophy. Um. I got a, I got a, a huge check, which was like a gift certificate to. I think it's Bomex. Bomex, yeah, for a uh -huh. kit. Bomex. So yeah, I got like a, a body a, a check for a full body kit. I got a another gift certificate to uh, Doluck USA. Love it. Um, which is I think they're no longer yeah. lo longer in existence. Um, and I got a set of Falcon. ST one fifteen tires. <laughs> you remember set. the model? Of course. That oh was my God. that was the drifting tire then. Yeah, back then. Yeah. That's that's what they were using in Japan. That's what we were using. Yeah. Yeah. Um it was really cool because those tires made a lot of smoke compared mm -hmm. to other tires. So yeah. yeah. Oh, you remember all your prizes. That that was a lot of prizes. I remember doing all these drift competitions and it was kinda like you get a little trophy or a little medal, but yeah. like Prizes were kind of rare, I think. Yeah, you know, I, Ken, Ken. I don't know, you know, who to thank for that. I, I'm sure it was a, 
um, Ken, a combination. I, I'm sure. But yeah. like, he, he really did a good job putting all those great prizes together. Shout out, Ken. Shout out, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Um, oh, my gosh. What, what did winning Drift Show Off do for you? Because I feel like this was like we were on the cusp of something, which was crazy because I feel like we were beginners. Yeah. And we're thrown into like drifting uh, with Koguchi yeah. and doing these drift competitions. And, and I felt like it was so fast and it we was, were going. It was really fast. Cause yeah. For, you know, for us as drivers, we were just out there trying to be better every day. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know how many were thinking about the big picture. Um, like the event organizers, they saw the big picture. Yeah. We were just in it and we were focused on our driving. Yeah. But, um, I remember Ken Miyoshi invited you and me out to dinner after mm -hmm. and not the day after, but, uh, we went to dinner with him, just the three of us. And he t was talking to us about his vision the future, and what drifting was going to turn into yes. and how he wanted to keep a close relationship with me, um, because he thought I had a lot of potential. And, uh, that was kind of mind blowing to me because that wasn't stuff that I really wanted to think about, you know, yeah. I just, I just wanted to drive. I just wanted to get better. Well, yeah, and, and you're and you're also like the most humble dude, like on the grid. Yeah, you know, like I, you're I not. It's I not all about you. Yeah, all the time. I, I kind of felt like um, you don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> you're like really good drivers you out there. Be talking to me. Yeah, talk to someone else. But thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that was a really cool experience. Um, just that was kind of how. I mean, I had been to lots of import show offs before, yep. but. I never had a one on one with Ken. Mm -hmm. So getting to know him in that way was really cool. Yeah. Um, and then Tanabe approached me after the event. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had some sponsorships, but they were kind of like little sponsorships. Yeah. So, you know, cartoon sticker was on my car. Um, you know, they was we were kind of just buddies, right? Yeah. Um, Tanabe was the and I was sponsored by cause at the time, cause LSDs. Um, but Tanabe was the first one where it kind of happened because of what I had done and mm -hmm. not just because I was friends with these dudes. Yeah. And so uh, Tanabe wanted to do a full sponsorship for me and they gave me everything in their catalog on my car. Oh my God. So all, really? of, everything? All, of, all of the arms. I don't remember that. Yeah, they gave me all my full suspension arms. They gave me a few mufflers. Yeah. Um, a few. <laughs> yeah. They gave me coilovers. Because uh, I think at the time I was on... Tains. No, no. I was never on Tains. I was on HKS coilovers. Oh, those that are I, light. That I bought. Yeah. Which was a really big deal. Yeah. Um, I think... Well, actually, I think... It's your flex right there. I was on HKS. I was on HKS, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think they didn't come out with coilovers right away. But as soon as they did, like, they, you know... They gave them to me. And that was the start of your relationship with Tanabe, like yeah. Edo and James Nagahashi. James Nagahashi. You know, and, and, and I Jiro. feel, oh yeah, well, Boss Jiro, yeah. of course, we've like eaten with him and drank yeah. with him. And I feel like that set the precedence for our long relationship with Tanabe, even to this day. Yeah. You know, um, we're always still working with them and, and they're always still like our supporters. Yeah. And it was... It's really special to me, like yeah. our relationship with them. Yeah, definitely. And they, you know, they always uh, help me when I need some parts. And, you know, later that they, um, they, uh, they bought SSR. So, you know, that's why I have SSR wheels on my car. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then with, with Tanabe, because they were really close with Signal, like I, mm -hmm. you know, they wanted me to throw on some Signal stickers on my car. And, yeah. Um, I forgot how Signal helped me. They helped me with a few things too. Yeah, they're working on your car. I remember. Yeah, yeah. suspension stuff. Yeah. But so I love. So that. that's how that happened. Yeah, and then I feel like this kind of opened doors for you for Formula Drift. I kind of I feel like this is where it started. Where it, it was like because Formula Drift was the next year, mm -hmm. and so I felt like this set you up to be able to drive formula drift and like get support for it, formula it was drift. definitely something that i could put on my sponsor sponsors the 
it's definitely something I could put on my sponsorship deck. Yeah. To, you know, it kind of gave me some something good on my resume to, you know, let people know why they should sponsor me. Yeah. And I wasn't just some like hopeful kid with, you know, with dreams, right? Yeah. Like I, I have something, I have some accomplishments. So this that's, this definitely helped that. It, it, I think it did a lot for my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it did. I, I feel like you wouldn't be doing Formula Drift if you didn't win Drift Show Off. I think I, I no, I would have. You I think? still would have, yeah. Maybe yeah, you wouldn't definitely. have found sponsors. <laughs> maybe, maybe I wouldn't have found sponsors. I don't know. But that was your so drift show off was your first win. Yeah, it was my first win. Yeah, that's crazy. It was my only win. Was it your only win? I mean, you've won other times, but you've placed. Yeah, you haven't won. It was my first. only first place. Yeah, yeah, your only first place. Yeah. So uh, who was who was second? Um, it was Alex. I think it was Alex. Alex was second. Yeah. Then Calvin? No. No. Brian Norris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, GIC. Hey, yeah. hey, shout out. Yeah, so so I remember after winning, mm -hmm. I was so proud of myself for actually beating a works car. Oh, Because uh -huh. Alex's car, my car, they were both street cars. Yeah. Very humble looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no liveries. There yeah. was no, like we both like didn't have much power i mean he had a i don't, can't remember if he had a turbo in his car yet but i think he did but you know we, we you had these little street cars and then you <laughs> and then you have jic bringing out their their rig you know pulling out <laughs> a, you know a full race prepped car yeah you know um and and after the after the trophy ceremony jic had the hood popped and you know the kind of like show like hey you know come look at you know what we have under the hood and stuff like that and i remember it was it was totally um it was totally oh dumb but I, was, oh I like i popped my hood too <laughs> just to show the show everyone like i got nothing under here right like yeah i had a stock stock intercooler i the only thing i had was a blow off valve and an air cleaner that was it <laughs> so like that was kind of my petty like get back at them yeah. You know, like, it was dirty too, of course. I didn't clean it, you know. Yeah. Uh, you always have a dirty engine bay. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of water under the bridge, whatever. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all I'm, good. I'm an adult now. Things like that are so stupid. I know. I'm so silly. But that did suck that he didn't pay you. So Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Marked. <laughs> <laughs> so and you know, in closing, I think what what is your biggest takeaway from Drift Show Off? I think the biggest thing is how many lives it changed. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many people there that um, I ended up meeting later on, and you know they would tell me that they were there, yeah. and they're still involved in drifting today. Mm -hmm. But you you see how um, it kind of opened people's eyes. It inspired people to get into drifting, it, it kind of introduced them to what they're passionate about today. And it really changed, I feel like it, it changed the course. So like, these are not just people that are drifting today. They're mm -hmm. people that own drifting related businesses or, you know, they are, um, they're doing things for the drifting community. So, uh, you know, they, I don't know if they knew it at the time when they decided to throw this event, mm -hmm. the, the shock waves it would send throughout over the years. Yep. Yep. Um, so just seeing that is really cool to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, people like Brian Hart was there. I didn't know Brian Hart at the time. He was there. He has pictures from the event. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like Aaron Suarez, who ended up being part of Pink Godzilla. He was there. Mm -hmm. He's like in the background of our photos, <laughs> like at the trophy ceremony. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, look, look where, you know, where he went with drifting, you mm -hmm. know, and pe everyone... Everyone knows Pink Godzilla and yep. and Dosan, you That's know. That's right. Um, Put an imprint on all of us. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, happy anniversary yeah. on your first and only win. Yeah. <laughs> and happy anniversary to the Drift Show Off, the first Drift Show Off ever. Yeah. I, yeah. I think um, this, is, this, uh, this is also bigger than just Drift Show Off mm -hmm. because... 
this was kind of the first major event for drifting in the U.S. Yeah. One of the, the it could be arguably the biggest mm -hmm. for me at least. Yeah. Um, but this also signals that um, all the 20th anniversaries that are about to come, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Formula D. Yep. Um, D1. Mm -hmm. A lot of things started happening pretty shortly after that event. Yep. So. Oh, wow. 20 years. Oh, I my know. gosh. Well, thank you for coming on my show. I don't want to hear from anyone <laughs> saying I wasn't born when Drift Show Off happened. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. The late, the early 2000s. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on and being in my hot seat. Yeah. And letting me talk to you How today. How was it? Oh, you're you're good. You're a little hazy, but good I'm thing totally I hazy. <laughs> good thing I have good notes. Yeah. So, no, you did great, babe, and I'm I'm so proud. I was so proud of you that day when you won. I was like, I know you're yeah, right there with me. That's my man. I got, you want to take a picture with the trophy? It's got to um, be with me. Borohachi and... Sam dumped cold water on all oh, over me. Yeah. It was so cold that day. I was drenched. I know, I know. <laughs> it was at night in the the uh, awards ceremony yeah. and stuff. It was so cool, yeah. so fun. But I was so proud of you. I still am. I was like, oh my god, he's so cute. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta bring was... that trophy back. It's like in pieces right now. I know. I well, did... We still have it. It was all though. wobbly. I had to take it apart before it fell apart. I know, and then it's kind of my fault too. And so I gotta help you repair it. Yeah. But we still have it. I wish day. I kept that big check. It was just so dumb how big it was. <laughs> and I was like, why am I keeping this big piece of styrofoam? Yeah. I think we lost it in a move. I yeah, don't know. Well, no, I threw it away. I was oh, just like, damn. I can't. Just we, straight we up. We had so much stuff to move. I was just like, I'm not going to move this thing. Yeah. Now I wish I had it. Yeah. That'd be I, good. You know, it should so, be like on the podcast wall. You know right what's now. funny? <laughs> I, didn't ca I didn't cash in that Bomex check. I, I never got a body kit. And I didn't get any of the awesome Doluk stuff that I wanted. Oh, because Doluk closed, right? They, yeah, they, they closed. They like... I wanted, you know, the crossbar, like all the bars, That's the ladder like bars. That's how you roll, though. Like Benson's got like, he always gets gift cards and he never uses them. Same thing. It's he wins hard. competitions, gets checks, doesn't use them. I always think, you know, they'll, they'll always be around. <laughs> I have time to spend it and I just don't spend it. You calculated. You're like, oh, wait. Yeah. Gotta really wait. That's cool. Well, thank you again. Congratulations. Long live Thank Drift you. Show Off. Long live Drift Show Off. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Moto. Thank you, everyone who was involved. Yes. You yes. guys you guys really changed the course of drifting, I think. Yeah. Long live drifting. All right, honey buns. Thank you so much for coming on this episode of Storytime. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Are you a good storyteller and have a good drifting related story to tell? You got to fill out an application at podcast.sil80mania.com. In the upper right, there's a link called Storytime app. Fill it out and I'll be looking forward to reading it. And if you're watching on YouTube and you enjoyed the podcast, do what my boys from Auto Factory Realize say and make sure to like that smash button and hit subscribe. Thank you guys for listening.